Today's video has been sponsored by Mongoose Publishing and their Starship Operator's Manual for the Traveller tabletop roleplaying game. This is not just a mere companion piece for players of the tabletop game, it's also a fully fledged book packed with all sorts of interesting details from the rich and deep setting that is Traveller. Read about all aspects of life aboard a Starship, from how to work the ship itself to what you could do in your time off. It also includes all the juicy details covering every part of a spaceship, from the core system like weapons, engines and jump drives, right down to the hull. And there's cool art and diagrams too! There's also a complete walkthrough for three of the most common and versatile craft in the setting, the classic Scout Courier, Hardy Far Trader and the Safari Ship. How do you keep animals aboard a starship? Find out in the Traveller's Starship Operator's Manual by clicking the link in the description or pinned comment below to get your 168 page PDF or a physical version and a PDF! Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Dock. I'm Hojiwana and today, with the help of Gabriel Fonseca, producer and science advisor for the Sojourn audio drama, we are looking at how you would design an FTL system or drive. Not only are such drives just playing cool with their many varied ways of functioning, but are also the keystone that holds up many settings. If you want to have lots of planet hopping adventures filled with strange worlds and fascinating alien cultures, it's almost a requirement to have superluminal travel. It is it's possible to have those in a setting with years long slower than light travel too, but just on a very different scale. Those huge, galaxy spanning adventures from space operas and the like are made possible thanks to FTL. The first and most important thing is to avoid falling into the techno bubble trap. Going super deep on the techno babbly specifics of whatever hand wavy stuff happens to cause FTL sounds important and useful to know, but really it's on the bottom of the priority list. To be clear, that doesn't mean don't do it, just that it's much more vital to develop the rules for an FTL system and how it functions. The fluff behind all that can come later. These rules should cover the system's capabilities and limitations. Like how fast is it? Is travel instantaneous or does it take time? Does the travel time for the travellers match up with those outside? This determines many things, like how casual FTL travel can be, like the difference between walking somewhere, getting on a bus, or a long journey by ship. Combine this one together with whether there is superluminal communications and you work out how fast information can spread throughout the setting, and consequently how fast people can physically react to that information. If there aren't FTL comms, then messages have to be carried everywhere by ship, and that by itself has knock-on effects on everything from governance to trade and war. Another rule to consider, does the superluminal drive work everywhere, or perhaps only in certain places like a away from large sources of gravity, or in specific jump points. If those points are naturally formed, then they need to be discovered and mapped, and become extremely vital strategic locations for trade and defence, especially if they change. The same goes for deciding if they can be artificially made in the form of jump gates and the like, but if anyone can make them, then their importance goes down. Related to this is can the FTL drive be disrupted somehow? The obvious example here is the gravity well generators from Star Wars, but this can be expanded out to non-location based systems easily enough. Some more rules related to the drive's use. Is it cheap to make and run, or expensive? This determines how widespread access to FTL travel is. In Star Wars, they're cheap and everywhere because of that, so access is easy and travel is commonplace. You can attach modifiers to this rule too, like with maintenance, fuel, or needing a trained or modified operator. For example, Dune has extremely limited and highly controlled FTL because only navigators using Spice have the prescience required required to make it safe. You don't need to limit this to physical concerns either, political control can apply just as strongly. I'm sure there's some rules I'm forgetting, but if you lay out the ones I've mentioned, you can spin out the entire workings of a whole setting from them, which we'll talk about in a moment. Or vice versa, if you want a specific type of setting or a framework to tell a particular story, then you can work backwards, finding the rules that best fit what you want to do. While these rules are important, it is possible to bend them slightly to meet the needs of the plot. The easiest one to fiddle with is the speed, leaving it as more of a rough guide than 
something rigid, letting you move ships around at just the right times to keep things interesting. If this is done skillfully, then the audience will never notice it happening, because the plot being satisfying is way more important than whether or not those reinforcements would have arrived at that exact time based on where they left from. However, if the rules are bent just a little too much, or even outright broken, it can leave a subtle sense of wrongness. Compare the way the hyperdrive is used in the different productions of Star Wars. The original trilogy had a time delay from calculations before you could jump to hyperspace, which had to be done in space, and then there was downtime during travel, all of which sometimes applied in the sequel trilogy, but were often thrown out of the window in favour of doing exciting new stuff, which is a fine goal to have, but maybe not when it comes at the cost of the very flavour of the setting itself. It would be like having transporters in Star Trek be even more ludicrously capable than they already are. A quick example with Mass Effect, which does explain its hand-wavy stuff to some extent, but all the other bits around its FTL are more important. The most immediate, plot-vital one is the use of mass relays for near-instant travel across huge tracts of the galaxy, because the normal FTL method that ships directly use is slow by comparison. The best FTL being limited to these key strategic locations makes them natural focal points for action, and even the central plot itself in the first game. But that slow FTL that every ship has is still vital for the exploration portion of the games, in order to give the player freedom on where they can go while keeping it feeling somewhat chronologically continuous. There's also at least one bent or broken rule in the climax of the first game. Do you know what it is? And now a less quick example from the tabletop RPG Traveller, which uses a small set of strict FTL rules to create a setting that resembles older pulp sci-fi and evokes the Age of Sail with nobles and piracy. These rules are 1. No FTL communications. 2. Every jump takes a week, no matter the distance. 3. You need to be a minimum distance of 100 diameters away from objects bigger than the ship before you can jump, so you have to fly away from planets and suns and such. 3a, jumping out from within that distance is possible, though can cause misjumps, but you cannot jump into that distance at all. 4. Jump drives also have range limits, and require fuel per jump based on the ship's overall volume. Because of the time delay inherent in jumping and the lack of FTL comms, every planet becomes a bit of an island. Your closest neighbours are always a week away, but the furthest ones can be much longer than that. Top-down governance over multiple planets becomes practically impossible unless they're in the same system, leading to individual fiefdoms that band together for mutual support. The 100 diameter distance for jumps expands the delays more, but most importantly gives lots of opportunity for shenanigans to happen to ships while they move to and from jump distance. And shenanigans leads to fun roleplay and cool stories. The jump fuel based on ship volume works in much the same way, leading to ships only carrying a small amount and making frequent stops at star bases to refuel. And stops means shenanigans. There's also interesting consequences for ship to ship combat, since do you carry more fuel to make more jumps, or less to have more weapons? There's way more detail on this Traveller example written by Gabriel Fonseca that we just couldn't fit into this video, and if you're interested in that, we have it up for free on the Space Dark Patreon. Another interesting example about FTL rules is Stargate SG-1, which has many forms of FTL, but the important one is the Stargates themselves. The gates allow point-to-point -point near instantaneous travel, as long as you have the address for where you want it to go, power for the gate, and can actually fit through it. These things already set a ton of limitations on the gate's usefulness, but also create many options for stories. On top of that, as the show progressed, we learned more rules, like the 38-minute maximum opening time, but that one in particular we discover is actually a bendable rule, since there are specific circumstances where that time can be extended, which was an interesting surprise both for the characters in-universe and the audience, something that was maintained by this rule bending being an extremely rare occurrence. There's plenty more of the rules we discussed earlier that apply to Stargate, like them not being able to be built and only one working on a planet at a time, which makes each gate extremely valuable, though this was tempered by the use of hyperdrives on ships, but they were a lot slower. Examining the FTL systems in existing settings and reverse engineering their rules can help immensely in making your own. Think about why they were made that way, how well they work, and what rules they bend can aid you in your own creations.
That's not how mass relays work. You can support Space Talk by joining our Patreon, where you can get our frigate and space fighter design reference books. Alternatively, you can support us directly through YouTube by becoming a channel member. Thanks to our supporters, and thank you for watching.